Hey everybody, I'm heading west on I-74, leaving Peoria, Illinois. Heading back home to Davenport, Iowa. Got about uh, 90 miles or so ahead of me. And uh, I've spent the entire morning down here in Peoria. Got down here, oh, about uh, 6.30, 6.45 this morning. Uh, the day began in uh, Fellowship Bible Church of Peoria with Pastor Jason Oligood. And uh, he was gracious enough to have me come over to the church and do the morning prayer and Bible reading from his study. Uh, he joined me for that, opened us up in a word of prayer this morning. So that was a great start to the day. And then I headed over to the Peoria uh, Police Department. Came down to Peoria today to engage in Project 1019 work. If you're not familiar with Project 1019, uh, that is when I stand outside of law enforcement agencies, uh, police, sheriff's department, state patrol, highway patrol, whatever it may be, and I stand outside of these uh, police stations holding a large sign that says, Law Enforcement Lives Matter, Romans 13, 1 to 5, Acts 10, 1 to 48, and then underneath that, crossencountersmen.com. Because uh, law enforcement lives do matter. Yes, every life matters. Born and unborn, regardless of gender, which of which there are only two, male and female, and uh, regardless of skin color. Uh, not regardless of race, because there's only one race, and that is the human race. Uh, dividing races on color lines is a sinful human construct based entirely on the sandy foundation of sin. Man choosing himself over his fellow man and at the same time hating those who are not like him. There is only one race, the human race. Every single human being, regardless of the color of their skin, the language they speak, the area in which they live, the family from which they come, uh, we are all created in the image of God. We are all image bearers of our Creator. So, I stand outside these police stations holding the Law Enforcement Lives Matter sign, um, encouraging the citizens of that given community to support their local law enforcement, uh, and to encourage those who uh, serve their communities as police officers, uh, state troopers, highway patrolmen, deputy sheriffs, parole, probation, federal agents, you name it. And I, I always have the gospel ready to go. I have uh, Police Lives Matter gospel tracts, which I wrote with, uh, with my, uh, my brother Marv Plementosh. And then I have a, an assortment of other tracts that I use depending on where I am, how far I am from home, uh, that I give to civilians. So I began today after my time of prayer and Bible reading at uh, Fellowship Bible Church in Peoria, Peoria with Pastor Jason Oligood at the Peoria Police Station. Uh, hundreds of cars stood there for two hours. Hundreds of cars uh, saw the sign. A number of, uh, of patrol cars drove by, so a number of officers saw the sign. Uh, almost immediately after setting up, a young lady named Liz, who works as a court-appointed advocate uh, for abused children who find themselves in the court system. Um, she drove by, saw the sign, and as she put it, I was so moved by the sign, I had to stop and thank you. So she got out, she took a picture of me with the sign, I asked her if I could take a picture of her with the sign, with her phone and mine, and she was gracious enough to allow that. And of course, Liz received the gospel, so you'd be praying for her. I uh, was able to put the gospel into the hand of a number of people walking by. There is a homeless shelter directly across the street from the police station. So a number of uh, people coming in and out of that shelter received gospel tracts. And uh, one commanding officer with uh, the Peoria Police Department, three stars on his collar, so he's part of the command staff. Um, don't recall his name, forgive me. 
Uh, but he received the gospel. He was thankful for me being out there. And uh, so I thanked him for his service and made sure to put the gospel into his hand. After two hours there, I moved over to the uh, facility for the Peoria County Sheriff's Department. Now, like uh, a number of the Sheriff's Departments out in this area, the uh, County Jail, uh, the Juvenile Detention Center, the Sheriff's Department Headquarters are all part of one large facility. And my experience thus far has been that um, some of these Sheriff's Department facilities are in the middle of nowhere. So I stood at the entrance of the facility along a, a main highway, uh, not too far from the airport here in Peoria, uh, the International Airport of Peoria, and stood there with my sign. Um, as with uh, my experience outside of the Peoria Police Department, uh, outside of the Peoria County Sheriff's Department, the response by, um, need to slow down here, entering into a construction area. The response by motorists was overwhelmingly positive. That has been my experience everywhere I've gone thus far. It's been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, a couple of one finger waves here and there, and uh, you know, or a couple of shakes of the head like they don't matter or I'm crazy or whatever it might be. But by and large, where this big rig's going, I don't know. I've noticed that truck drivers out here in the Midwest really do believe they own the road. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Now that does not include my dear brother, John Pricer, who is a truck driver and a good one. And I'm sure he does not believe he owns the road, but I digress. So anyways, the response overwhelmingly positive at both of those primary agencies in the Peoria area, uh, was able to put the gospel into uh, the hands of a couple of probation officers, as well as a couple of deputy sheriffs. Now, my plan had been to spend time outside of those two departments, and then maybe go into town and do some crosswalking uh, before I met Pastor Oligood for lunch. But as I was standing outside the Sheriff's Department, I noticed uh, a patrol car, a couple of them, from a different agency come into the Sheriff's Department. Now, departments will bring suspects, uh, in, you know, arrestees, directly to the Sheriff's Department. Uh, not all of the agencies are large enough to have their own jails, and so they will transport from their station directly to uh, the Sheriff's Department, the county jail. And uh, these units were from Bartonville, B-A-R-T-O-N-ville, Bartonville, Illinois. Well, they're obviously close enough to come in and out of the sheriff's uh, department there. So instead of going down into Peoria to do some crosswalking, I decided to look up that department and spend an hour or so there before lunch. And as Providence would have it, it was only about five miles away from... Uh, where I was standing outside the Sheriff's Department. So I went over there. Martinville is a, uh, referred to as a village. So it is a smaller community. Uh, the fire department is in a strip mall with an Italian restaurant. Uh, and I'm not making light, not making fun, just giving a description. Uh, the police department uh, it sits next to the fire department. And then the high school there, I presume it to be the high school, um, on the opposite side of the police department. So smaller agency for a smaller community, um, typically, uh, so not a hard and fast rule, but it's usually about one and a half officers per 1,000 residents. So the size of the department is uh, determined by the size of the community. Now, uh, communities that have an overabundance of cash flow uh, could afford to hire more officers. Uh, communities that um, struggle financially can't hire as many. So uh, I haven't had time yet to look up the particulars about Bartonville uh, the, as a community, how many people are there, or how many officers are there. But I could tell by the by the community and um, and by the size of the police station, fire station, that it's uh, uh, Bartonville's 
a village, a smaller community. So I was standing out there uh, for a little bit, and again, uh, like Peoria, which has about 120,000 people, uh, Bartonville, a smaller community, the response was overwhelmingly positive to the Law Enforcement Lives Matter sign. In fact, there was not one negative response in the hour that uh, I stood out there. Was able to give tracks to a number of people walking up and down the sidewalk. And not long after I was out there, but the chief of police came out. He said, yeah, the guys inside said there's some guy standing out here with a sign. So I thought, oh no, what are they protesting? <laughs> well, he was, uh, he was happy and encouraged to see that I was not protesting, but supporting. In fact, he was so encouraged that he wanted to take pictures of me with the sign. He uh, he had a uh, field training officer, 30-year veteran of the department. He'll uh, celebrate his 30th anniversary in just four days. Had him come out to take a couple of pictures of me and the chief with the sign. And then, then the chief says to me, he says, hey, uh, would you mind doing a video message for me that I could post on our Facebook page? Tell us about yourself, why you're here, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and of course I said, yeah, and uh, took a couple of takes because uh, I guess the volume wasn't working too well uh, the first time around, uh, but the chief uh, recorded a video of me explaining that I'm a retired deputy sheriff, uh, now in full-time ministry, living in the Quad Cities area, uh, like a doofus, I forgot to mention Grace Fellowship Church of Davenport. I had two takes and I forgot to mention the church two times. I'm a doofus. Pastor Mike, Elder Nick, church family, I'm a doofus. Forgot to mention that, so please forgive me, church family. But I was able to talk about um, part of my ministry being the law enforcement and going to different police departments to encourage the law, law enforcement family and to bring them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, the chief and that 30-year veteran FTO both got the gospel and uh, so I'm looking forward to getting home and, and hopefully seeing uh, you know, pictures and that video up on the Bartonville Police Department Facebook page. And uh, if we're connected uh, on Twitter or Facebook, I'll make sure to, to share that uh, once I get home. So wonderful day of ministry. It is now about three in the afternoon. So I, I left home at uh, just a little before 5 a.m. So it's been a 10 hour day so far, probably about another hour, um, hour 15 minutes or so before I get home. So another full day, a wonderful day. Uh, I praise the Lord for this day and the opportunity to serve him. Oh, oh, oh. now Michelle and I, my eldest daughter, we like to do some bird watching from time to time. Love watching, taking pictures of God's creation. Uh, in all its forms, in all its beauty. And as I'm driving from the Sheriff's Department to Bartonville PD, I, I see a bird of prey circling overhead. And I've seen a lot of bald eagles out here, uh, which, has been, which has been wonderful. But all kinds of birds of prey. Well, this was a very large hawk, and it was just circling over the top of a tree. And in its talons, probably a five or six foot long snake that it had just killed. That was amazing. So the Lord blessed me with being able to uh, to be awestruck by what he has made. Uh, and uh, so I thank God for that as well. Anyways, been a great day, day of ministry. I want to focus now on getting home in one piece. Maria demands that of me. And so I want to fulfill that request. Uh, but until next time, God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye.